Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today it has to do with my terrible day. Yep, I was having one of those days where everything was going wrong that could go wrong and everything was irritating me just unbelievably. And so I don't have a time machine to go back and start the day over. So I had to find a different way to shift out of that place and my art supplies are the way to do it. So I'm gonna play in my art journal for you here and when I, the video starts, you're gonna see how the very first thing goes wrong. And now it's really not a big deal, but it all felt huge to me because I was having one of those days. And one of the other things that happens early on makes me decide in an act of defiance to put brown all over the page. And yeah, I did regret it, but you know, hey, it's play, right? But as the video goes on, you'll see how suddenly things aren't irritating me as much and I can see them for the fun and the play. And by the end, you'll see how I use a stencil in a way that I was trying to avoid using, but then it ended up being really helpful. Well, anyway, it'll all make sense when you get to the end and you can see how a stencil can be used for mark making. All I wanted to do was get some white paint on here. I squirted some out of the bottle and I could tell it was looking pretty runny there. I'm like, you know, let me see if it's really that runny. And sure enough, it was pretty translucent. I really need to shake up the bottle. And this was setting the tone for how this play was gonna go. Felt like I couldn't even get the paint to come out of the bottle right. Ever have one of those days where it just feels like you can't do the simplest things and everything is working against you? Now, that's where I was at. And I'm going to be really honest, I was in a pretty sour mood. I was not smiling and happy as I was doing this. I was pretty much grumbling and growling about stuff. And what put me in such a mood? Well, it's the computer. Computer elves can do it to me every time. And I was so agitated. And I thought if I stepped away and got my art supplies out, that it would make it better. And that is the power of play. It really can make so many things feel so much better. But it doesn't happen in a split second. Sometimes you have to give yourself a few minutes of play to let that energy, that mood kind of shift. Now I'd put the yellow on there and I didn't let it dry at all. And I wanted to put the blue on top and I wanted the blue to stay vibrant and bright, not mix with the yellow, but um, wet paint to wet paint, what's gonna happen? Of course they're gonna mix. But I was still really irritated by this and nothing was gonna go right and by golly, if everything's just gonna go wrong, then I'm gonna make it go really wrong. This was my act of defiance for today. If everything was gonna go wrong, then it was gonna go really wrong. And I just followed that impulse, that sort of angsty teenager in me, just went nuts putting all that brown on there, going round and round those circles. So how did I make that background that I'm turning into something really ugly at the moment? Well, that was done with a round gel plate and just cleaning off my brayer on the page. That was done eons ago, just waiting for the day when I really needed this background to play. As soon as I put the paint brushes down, all I could think is, wow, this is unbelievably ugly. I mean, beyond ugly. So I turned to a book to help me. This one's a hygiene and health textbook from, I think, about the 1930s. And I'm going to use some of that to help me hide, cover up, make that brown disappear. Now that brown paint is not dry yet. So if I put the gel medium on the paint and then put the paper on it and spread it around, yeah, I'm gonna get some of that brown on there. So I decided I was just gonna put the gel medium directly on the paper. Now in a perfect world, I would carefully make sure that I had the gel medium all the way to the edge of the paper, that it was fully covered so it would go down nicely. And yeah, I'm not having one of those kinds of days. This is not a think clearly and make good choices kind of a day. I mean, after all, I just intentionally made brown on my page that looks like something that should be in a baby's diaper. Now, once I get most of these glued down, I did notice that there were some of them still kind of, well, curling up a little bit, or it was clear that they weren't really stuck down all the way. And so that's why you'll see me add more little bits and pieces here and there, basically to glue down the ones that I didn't glue down all the way. This is about the point during the play when I realized, hey, I'm not in quite as bad a mood because I wasn't irritated that I had to glue some more paper on there. I just had fun slapping that gel medium on and getting those papers on there. And so bit by bit, as this page goes along, I start out in this really cranky, sort of growling kind of mood. And by the end, I'm back to being a decent human being. 
but I'm not there yet. You see, I got really cranky with myself when I squirted that paint out that I put more out there than I intended. And that's the goofiest thing on this planet for me to be irritated with myself about because I always put too much paint out on the palette. So while part of my brain is just beating myself up for that heinous crime of putting too much paint on the palette, there's another part of my brain that doesn't have to do a whole lot of thinking, that can just make those decisions about what to put on the page. And it's not magical, it's, it's not anything like that. It's just about understanding the principles of art journaling. Because once you understand what those foundational principles are, then it's so much easier to make decisions, even when you're having one of those days. Now, if you'd like me to walk you step by step through those principles so that you can apply them when you're art journaling so that you never have to be stuck no matter what happens on the page, then check out my online workshop called Art Journaling Fundamentals. I'll have a link down below for you or you can find it over on the website at acolorfuljourney.com. While I was using the yellow, the blue, and the green here, I was being really careful to make sure that I kept them separate, that they didn't even touch on the brushes as much as possible. I really wanted to keep these colors separate. And that's gonna come back a little bit later in the video, so just keep that in mind. I wanted to do some scribble journaling on here, but with paint this wet, the only thing I could really use on it safely is one of these fine liners. They come as an empty bottle and they have these really fine tips and then you simply fill them with a really runny liquid like ink. And normally I'd say that you can't clog these things, but I've actually managed to clog it here. Yep, it's just par for the course today. But it's a pretty easy fix because there's a pin in the cap that goes all the way down that skinny tip so that I just poke it through there and that got the paint flowing again. Part of me wishes it had clogged really, really quickly so that I didn't do any of this on here because I really don't like how the scribble journaling looks on here. But the hits keep on coming today because I'm about to do something I really don't like. I grabbed one of my stencils that I've created for Stencil Girl products. This one's called It's Time to Play, and it has all sorts of quotes about play on it. And I decided to pick just one of the words that I wanted to really highlight and put on this page. I'm going to start with this one, and I've kind of got this idea of how it's going to look and what I'm going to do with it. And so I'm stenciling on here with black paint. And the second I put it on there, I'm like, oh, this is not really quite what I wanted. Instead of saying this was a mistake, I'm just going to call it an oops, an outstanding opportunity presenting suddenly. Now you might think that that black paint is a big serious commitment, but it doesn't have to be if you can move somewhat quickly. If you grab something, say, like a baby wipe, and then just start wiping it off, you might be surprised how much of it you can remove. But I couldn't get all of it off here. I could get a lot of it off, but not all of it. And that's where the opportunity presented itself because I felt like that was this big black smear, this, this, this horrible smudge upon the page, and I had to get it hidden. I had to disguise it somehow. Now, probably as you're looking at it, you're thinking, it's really not that noticeable. But man, was it just, just glaring at me. So since I had this stencil in my hand, I thought I'm gonna use this to cover it up. Now, once I saw that little bit peeking out over there, I realized, oh, I wanna do the whole background like that bits and pieces here and there. Now, even though this stencil has five different play quotes on it, I'm not actually putting these on here so that somebody could actually really read the full quote. I'm just tucking it around here and there, filling it in to create that background. This is one of the reasons why I love having quotes and sayings on stencils is because I can use them in a lots of different ways. I can use them as the actual full quote where somebody can read it, and I can also just take bits and pieces and put things together. Remember earlier in the video, I said that I was being extra careful to keep the yellow and the blue and the green separate so that they wouldn't smear or run into each other? Well, I was also being careful as I was stenciling because those paints aren't completely dry and I don't want a lot of things to smear. But the place I should have been watching is the palette. See the edge of the stencil around the word B? I just got it in a bunch of that yellow paint right there. The paint isn't gonna come from my page, it's gonna come from the palette. So when I go and do the stenciling here on the bottom left corner, you're gonna see a big old blob of yellow end up there that I didn't expect. Now, if that had happened in the beginning of this video, it would have horrified me, it would have upset me, cause well, I was in a mood. But thanks to the power of play, by the time I got to this part of the page, 
I could see it for what it was, an opportunity to have some fun. I could use up that paint that's on the back, and when I used all of it up, I actually could put more on there because it was kind of fun to do that. So I'm going to take some of that paint that I have on the palette, some of that stuff that I beat myself up for putting too much paint on. Turns out it's coming in perfectly handy at the moment. I'm going to smear that all around there and just start putting it all over the page. So if you're ever having a day that isn't going well quite the way you want it to, I highly encourage you to get those art supplies out and just let yourself play. Well, thanks so much for joining me for a little art journaling fun today. If you've been enjoying this video, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know as soon as I have a new video out. And if you'd like to see more of what I'm up to, more of the fun, head on over to the blog at acolorfuljourney.com. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.